What's up, everybody? Oh, man. My camera lens is a little dirty, but that's right. I don't want to rub it. I'll smear it, and then it'll be a smudge. A smudge. All right. Uh, Russ with RWGResearch.com here. Uh, this is video number 10 of the Hot Rod, the Honda Hobbit. Um, lots of stuff going on, and... I believe, if you guys are watching this video, I must have posted video number 9, which was some pretty cool uh, um, uphill driving and some just cruising downhill and just some mismatched stuff. Lots of fun stuff in that video. One thing I've noticed is this thing is very, very loud. It's just, it's loud. Um, I read a, a nice book on describing how a two-stroke really works. And um, the exhaust is an extremely important part of the entire apparatus. Um, this must be tuned to the motor and the um, the stroke and all sorts of different things. And if it's not, um, it just it, it it doesn't function very well because the exhaust. Um, well, I'll, I'll give you a very brief description. A two-stroke has no valves. It has it fires every single time the piston moves up to top dead center, and there's no time for anything else. Every time it fires, so. When it does this, um, it's constantly pulling in fuel, and the the housing of the two-stroke, which I've shown you guys, is lubricated by the fuel and oil mixture coming into it. So it comes in, goes through a reed valve, which is just a one-way valve, and it only allows air to come in into the chamber of the actual housing of this thing, the actual part where the, uh, um, the uh, crankshaft is in and then it goes through some ports and it gets pulled into the piston area where it gets compressed it fires it comes back down and the inlet ports and the exit port is all open like all at the same time um, the exit port if I'm not mistaken opens first and so what happens is the big amount of uh, air and, and fuel mixture that's being burnt goes into the um, the resonator basically this turns it into a resonator and as the shock wave goes down and in through this chamber and comes and kind of goes into this collapsing cone right here, it gets reflected back into the system and creates a negative pressure, which actually helps pull the gases out of this thing. When that happens, this thing is ringing like a bell. It is tuned very well. And so you can actually hear it. I haven't tried this. Let's just try tapping on this thing. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't really ring like a bell but if you listen to the motor run you can hear it ping 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 a lot of that noise is coming from this um, the exhaust right here is very important the rest of this and the silencer is only for just trying to silence this thing. It really isn't like tuned very much to this apparatus. This is where it's all tuned to, to this point right here. So, I've, uh, I'm going to try to quiet this thing down. One of the things that I did is I took this silencer apart. I will show you pictures because I didn't take video of this. And um, let me set this down. I'm going to show you what was inside of this silencer. So there's a clip back here, uh, you can kind of see it right there, and uh, this back part comes off and then you can slide this whole thing out, and inside here there's a tube that goes down to here and it's got holes all the way around it, you'll see that in the picture. Um, and originally I put screws in there to try to deflect the, the air around and make it uh, work better, but I, I didn't like that idea. I think it was restricting the flow too much. So, um, and actually the guy, somebody posted this in the comments and I went and looked up different ideas and people would take steel wool. This is the biggest uh, or the, the uh, most uh, spatial, if you will. It's not very fine. It's really coarse and lots of uh, space. It's grade number three. And um, basically I took this and removed what was originally inside of the, of the um, silencer, which was, which was this right here. And you can see this side was closest to the uh, exit or the inlet, and this was closest to the exit. And if I unwrap this, you can see right here, 
you can see the hole pattern. It's hard to see. You can see the hole pattern where the holes are. And that already looks very clogged up. Matter of fact, um, you can actually see here where the exhaust tried to push into the material. Right down here, there are actually like holes where the top isn't like that. And um, this stuff's going to get clogged up extremely fast, and it's going to be back to original like there's nothing in there. Um, there's a lot of oil and residue coming out of this thing originally when you fire it up. So let me set that down. And uh, so by taking the steel wool um, and allowing the gases to pass through it, it shouldn't clog up near as bad and it allows more silencing properties. Um, so I switched that out and it, and it did make a difference. I, I don't have a decibel meter. I wish I did because I'd like to know what the difference really is. So I did that and it didn't, it, it made a difference but not very much. So I'm like, okay, the only other thing is this thing is literally ringing like a bell. You can hear it. Um, it sounds good, but it's very loud. I want to try to quiet that down. So the, the options were to wrap this with something. So I got some just generic fiberglass that you put in like a, a house, you know. It uh, should handle pretty high heat. I just temporarily, on, with a while this was on the bike, I temporarily wrapped this whole thing up really good and I fired it up and it made a world of difference. Huge difference. So I thought, alright, I'll just get me some exhaust wrap and try to find something that I can put around here that will quiet this thing. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. I'm going to show you what I, I ended up getting. I got some of this uh, exhaust wrap. Let me... Uh, let's see, one of these was kind of open already. Pop this out of here and show you what it actually looks like. Check that out, big sticker, nice. All right, so this is the exhaust wrap. It's, it's fiberglass. Um, it's fiberglass mat, basically. Fine woven um, fiberglass mat. Oh man, let me uh, let me open it so you can see what it actually looks like. And um, they use this on a lot of different things, but um, one of the things is actual ex exhaust pipes. And they they want to keep the heat in. I don't really want to keep the heat in, but I gotta wrap something around it before I put insulation on there because the insulation won't handle the heat. Um, so this is fiberglass, so that's why I got gloves on. You can see it's it's fairly thin. It's actually a lot thinner than some of the stuff I've used on some of my other projects. But this is exhaust wrap. This is one inch by 50 foot. They did have two inch, um, but I wanted the thinner stuff. So I got two of those thinking that I don't know how much I'm going to use to wrap this exhaust. I think if, I care, if I'm careful and I just layer it instead of overlap it, um, this should wrap the whole thing one roll. I should be good. So the next thing that you're supposed to use on that is this high heat coating. And I found some silicone spray, um, but I couldn't find any locally, but I found some online that I would rather have used. But this is designed for this um, actual product you'd like to get a better view of it. This is designed for it. So I grabbed it. Um, and then I'm going to wrap that with fiberglass tape and then what I'm going to do is take this mat which is uh, good for radiant heat up to 2000 degrees Fahrenheit and it's good for um, I believe up to just at 500 degrees and I'll show you what this is. It's aluminum. It's aluminum but then it's got a an actual fiberglass type material on the back. Um, so this stuff should and is supposed to be able to handle the heat. I will probably end up putting the aluminum face down and putting the uh, other stuff facing out if I can uh, get the one of these to fit because I'm going to wrap another one of these over top of that mat and then spray it to try to give it a good seal. Um, the other thing that I got, I was reading online, and I've seen, I've actually owned some of this a long time ago, but didn't realize actually what it actually is or what it was. This is a Loctite brand, but there's many different brands. This is actually a silicone tape, and I've used it on different things. It works well, but my stuff was older, and I think it, uh, I stretched it too tight, and it, it wanted to rip. But it's basically 
it's very stretchy, but it adheres to itself. It's not sticky, uh, but it adheres to itself. I'll show you a piece, but I don't want to waste it. It's fairly expensive, but um, this is the stuff that I have now, and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to basically use this instead of steel wraps, because this is good up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, yeah, 500 degrees Fahrenheit. So, um, you can see that the exhaust got a little golden down here where it just came out. So it's definitely hot. Um, I don't plan on wrapping the header part here. I just plan on wrapping the rest of this. And if I have some left over, I'd love to wrap it all the way to this point. Um, <laughs> this is kind of haggard. I originally taped this. And there's a piece of pipe fitting in here that I machined to fit um, these two pieces together. And I just pressed them on there. And then I taped it because I think they were leaking. Um, that was just temporary. I'll probably end up using fiberglass tape on everything that I do. Um, fiberglass tape. Uh, and that's not it. I have a box of tape and random things and stuff. I will be using uh, just generic uh, aluminum tape for holding a few things. But then I'm also going to use that... Uh, there it is. Fiberglass tape. If you've never seen this, I couldn't find any locally. I, I just had had some here. But this is um, electrical tape, and it's designed for high heat applications. And it's actually a fiberglass tape. Not hard to see, but it's it's fiberglass. So that's what I used on here. You can tell it didn't even get hot. Uh, barely a tiny bit on the bottom, and that's it. It, it will dry out if you get it too hot but it'll hold together because it's fiberglass. It just gets brittle. So I think I have another roll of this. I hope I have more. My original intention was not to wrap a second coat of this, but instead just completely wrap the whole entire thing with fiberglass tape and then um, spray it with this, uh, this, high ho this high heat coating. So that's all that I've got. That's all I did. And I'm just going to time lapse recording uh, doing this because I think it would be fun. I'll probably end up doing just one wrap and then spraying it and letting it sit overnight and then I'll come back and probably cut this stuff. I don't know yet. I haven't decided. So, let's get started. Time lapse time. I hear something echoing in here. I was going to stream live, but I don't have very good Wi-Fi in here. I'm in a freaking aluminum box. You can see this, uh, this aluminum stuff. Um, it's crazy. This, these, both, I brought both my computers out here hoping I can get a good signal. The white Dell down there actually gets amazing good signal from uh, like really far away with any Wi-Fi. It's the best like Wi-Fi PC uh, or laptop that I've ever had as far as dense distance and connection. Um, but in this metal box, it just it completely kills it. My Wi-Fi isn't but 20 feet away. So, all right, let's get started. All right, check it out. Don't look too bad. Wrapping down this uh, was a little challenging. Maybe I should maybe I should have stopped about here and then wrapped it up it because it would lay better, I think. But it's at a, such a steep angle that it wanted to kind of overlap. It's not a real big deal because I'm gonna tape it up and uh, spray it anyway. But one thing's for sure, this fiberglass is nasty. It is everywhere. This should have been an outside project. Ah! Oh well. Alright. Uh, I don't know what's next. I'll figure it out. Alright, so I bought three rolls of this like years ago. Like five years ago or more. And obviously I didn't use much of it. So I want to show you quickly what this stuff is. So... I'm just going to uh, cut off a piece. This is pretty cool stuff. This stuff is old, so it, it may not work right. But if you can see it, 
it doesn't really stick to itself very well. Oh wow, it did stick to itself very well. So it kind of—it's not sticky though. Like, it doesn't really stick. But if you stretch it onto itself, like this, okay, around my finger, uh, it's almost impossible to get off. Like it. It actually bonds to itself. <coughs> and it's because it's silicone. Again, it's actually tearing. Because it's silicone. Or sili uh yeah. Silicone tape. It uh it's very high temperature. Um I've used this on a few applications and it works okay. Just like there I ripped it. But don't stretch it too tight. Um I think I'm going to spray this. And just completely wrap it with this stuff. <clears throat> it won't take much to wrap this whole thing. Maybe. Since I found more of it. And, uh, yeah. And then I'll wrap it with the insulation. Or I may just wrap the insulation. But I want to wrap a few bits of tape with the uh, fiberglass on top of this. Because I want to make sure this stays. But that's what this stuff is supposed to do. So. I'm going to go get some tape and tape everything I don't want sprayed. We'll start there. Oh. <laughs> uh, doesn't look too bad. I cleaned most of it off, but that spray can had a little bit of a problem. It's kind of leaking everywhere. Um, <laughs> the pin that goes inside of it was sheared off, or I should say it's been pushed over to the side, so I fixed it and now it leaks anyway um this stuff's like brown so this I painted everything as you can tell um, and I think it's gonna kinda harden and just keep everything nice I think maybe so um, what I'm going to do is you can see where the tape that I put on here I put a few more little pieces off camera just to cover up the spots where I uh, didn't quite get it uh, covered because of the brackets. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this uh, heat shielding stuff and I'm going to cut it down into strips and uh, well I could form it. I could try to form it. I might do that. I might cut it and actually try to form it to fit on here nicely. And then I think I actually have enough fiberglass tape here to wrap this whole thing with fiberglass tape and then I'll spray paint it so it'll just look like this over the entire outside. Um, I like the uh, the wrapped look. It's actually a really cool style that people go for. But I'm going for uh, less noise. So the, with the mat being on top it's going to look ugly. Ugly. So we'll see what we come up with. Yay! Okay, as you can see, I went ahead and decided to wrap the silicone tape on there anyway. I had found my other rolls that I had from a long, long time ago in my box of tape and other stuff. Uh, tape and glue. And so I went ahead and just wrapped the whole thing. The reason I did that is because the rubber is going to hold this thing nice and it will protect as a sound barrier. And or that's the idea behind it. Uh, there was a gentleman online that did a similar thing. He wrapped the whole thing with silicone baking sheets without even putting the uh, the wrap on there. This section gets very hot. Anything past this I don't think gets uh, quite that hot, so it shouldn't matter at all. This section could get pretty warm. But uh, we'll go ahead and put the mat on there. I went ahead and cut it down. And I'm actually going to cut it to nicely wrap around this entire thing. So the circumference will be a solid piece, and then I'll just cut slits and kind of wrap it around there. I did not want this very thick, um, because it does get pretty close to the engine, and I don't want it to block any airflow across the motor. Okay, well we'll see if we can cut and fit this, and then we'll wrap it with the fiberglass tape, and then I'll probably end up spraying it. This looks like it turned out okay. And uh, 
I went ahead and taped the end so I could spray them. Sprayed the header pipe. It's high heat temp paint, so it should be all right. Okay, well, let's see if we can get this mat on here. It should be interesting. Oh, yeah, that's really fun. Look at that busted knuckle right there from my scissors, believe it or not. That hurts. Okay, so um, I got to push really hard to the center. And it looks like there's some bad spot on this scissors chewing in my finger. I got to squeeze them together to get this stuff to cut. Here's some scraps. Um, so this is the last little bit. I might put a little just scrap piece on this right here but um, I think I'm gonna attempt to turn this inside out so the foil is on the inside uh, but I really don't want to to be honest I'd rather have this uh, material facing the inside so it has a little bit better insulation material I guess it doesn't really matter but um, yeah just cut the form right there a little bit at a time so I put tape on top here. I might trim some of these up a little, but once I put uh, tape on here really, really tight, it should be uh, a clean look, I hope. And that's what the fiberglass tape. So that's what it looks like at the moment. We'll see what it looks like when I get done. It might look very interesting. All right, kids, boys and girls, sons and ladies. Did I miss anybody? Come on, grandpas. Um, I need to put a piece of tape on there. Um, so this is what it looks like. <laughs> I have uh, wrapped it. Um, I think it will do the job. It actually, like, sounds quiet. Like, as far as just, it doesn't even sound like a piece of metal anymore. I'll show you what I mean. Hold on. Put some tape on there. So, like, remember earlier when I hit it with a screwdriver, it just sounded like something. I was just dead. Even if I hit the pipe, it just sounds dead. That's a very good sign. Um, so, I'm going to go paint this and let it sit overnight. And then, um, yeah. Guess I'll try to install it. The only other thing I have to work on, which I may do before I paint this, this very flimsy, you're not gonna be able to see it. Let me get you a little closer. This flimsy, crappy um, bracket here, you can see it's fairly straight. Well, that's because I straightened it. When you tighten the two bolts hold this on, this thing just, just bends over. So I'm gonna take some, uh, angled brackets. There's a whole bunch of iron down there that I brought with me from Indiana. Um, I'm gonna make me just a simple little bracket that has a, an L shape on it so it doesn't collapse and uh, basically just overlap it on top of this. Um, so one of them will be on this side and one of them will be on this side and they'll be able to clamp together where they can't go anywhere so they'll have a um, Basically, it'll look like this by hand. Will be another piece of metal, so it'll have an L to it if you look at it at an angle, and that'll help give it some port, some support because I'm leaking um, exhaust gases right there, and it's it's actually very loud. You can actually tell that it's very loud. Um, so that's where some of my exhaust noise is coming from. Just a tiny bit, but for some reason it uh, it it vibrates loose because this bends after so much time. So. Yep. Let's go give this thing a paint job. I'm about out of battery. I've been time-lapsing all this. Should be a fun time-lapse to watch. It looks stupid, but once I paint it black, it'll look okay. So, let's go do that. Alright. Yeah, the paint's still drying. 
It says I got 16 minutes left. I took the tape off, painted the ends because it looked pretty crappy to be honest. Um, this is actually the bottom side. The quote top side I coated a little bit more than the, the bottom. I can't really see. It's dark outside. So yeah, it's like, <clears throat> what time is it? Three o'clock in the morning. Um, yep. <sighs> Wonderful, guys. This should quiet it down a lot. I mean, a lot. Um, two strokes are extremely hard to quiet, as I've read online anyway, they tell me. So, if I get a much longer one of these, it might help a little, but it's not really very effective at full speed throttles and stuff like that so this should make it a lot more quieter and um, I hope it does so I'm gonna do some uh, filming of me driving past the camera and set it next to or uh, um, but you'll see just watch the video I probably already do it or I'll do it next peace out home geez have a good day. God bless you guys. Seriously, thank you for your support. Much love to everyone. And today is Father's Day, so happy Father's Day. This is what I did for myself today. By the way, I uh, did not have to open that second roll. I really didn't want to put this on the outside of that. That would be dumb. So I'm lucky I had the tape because I was going to go buy some, but I couldn't find any locally. So I'm glad I had two rolls instead of one. So I can bring one of these back because it's kind of expensive. And... Um, yeah, so this is a brand new spool, and that's what's left of 50 feet. So, bada boom, bada boom. Peace out. What's up, everybody? Um, it's 4.30 a.m. I started this project at about midnight. Father's Day. Um, check it out. I went ahead and installed it because I figured if I don't do it right now, I will not get time to do it. So, uh, <laughs> actually it looks pretty sweet. Looks like it's just got a cool wrap on it. So, uh, we'll check out what it sounds like in the morning. Don't mind this bucket. The only thing is, is I turned my exhaust when I was probably had it in the vise. And it's just barely touching my cover right there. So, I hope it doesn't vibrate. It really doesn't look bad though. Just don't know how dirty it's gonna get but it's not touching there's still plenty of room under there that was my original problem with uh, this type of insulation <laughs> you can imagine um, but I'll tell you what this is gonna quiet this sucker down amazingly amount you can see my haggard bolt right there I did go ahead and make my extra bracket on the exhaust port side it looks like crap Honestly, once I get that other cover on there, you probably won't see it. You can't really see it over here at all. Eh, I guess you can a little, but no big deal. It's just got to work. Da da da. Not bad. This looks like a total chaos. Black fuzzy stuff 